What's going on guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a great weekend so far. I know I didn't make a video yesterday. However, we did have a poll and we had over 1,800 responses on YouTube. And you can see right here, I asked everybody essentially, what are you doing currently? right now in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. And you can see that 60% said you are currently buying Bitcoin or holding Bitcoin, I assume maybe dollar cost averaging, 22% buying or holding altcoins, 8% trading cryptocurrencies, and 7% are sitting in fiat or stable coins. So first of all, shout out to everybody that participated. I am gonna have a look at all of these answers. And for everybody who dropped uh, your altcoins, I am gonna have a look because I, I do wanna look into some altcoins in 2020. I do think some of them are gonna have explosive um, they're gonna have an explosive year and I and I am interested so if you are looking into any altcoins currently just drop them below in the comments and let me know which ones that I should maybe keep my eyes on now not like oh because it's gonna 10x or 20x but if it has really good fundamentals drop it below and I'm definitely gonna look through it today and maybe we'll even do like a top altcoin video coming up right but having a look currently at what's going on with Bitcoin you can see we are up 1.18 percent now we did have a nice bounce off the top of the previous resistance, right? We got stomped out at around the 8.5K level, but as soon as we came back down again, we had another nice bounce, but once again, we are being stomped out. So what does this mean? Well, we're going to talk about that moving forward, but before we get into that, I just want to mention that today's video, I want to focus sort of on Bitcoin versus altcoins in 2020. I think a few people might have got maybe triggered by the other video. I'm not saying that altcoins are not going to do well. I actually think altcoins, some of them are going to tremendously outpace Bitcoin this year, but it's a matter of finding which ones, first of all, okay? I also wanna to touch on some of the big complaints about Bitcoin, right? But there are some big changes coming up that I do wanna talk about, some Bitcoin improvement proposals and one killer app that is supposed to be coming out this year. They don't actually have a specific date for it. And man, when that comes out, I think it's gonna be an absolute game changer. Oh yeah, and also we do have one coin that is under 51% attack and there was $70,000 unfortunately, that got double spent. So we're going to get into all that today. If that sounds good to you, you know what to do. And if you're not subscribed, what are you waiting for? We do this virtually every single day. And don't forget, tomorrow we're giving away a Ledger Nano S. If you want, uh, if you want to enter, just drop a comment on any video and you are eligible. We'll pick that winner tomorrow. So let's give the overall market cap a quick refresh right here. Bitcoin dominance still sitting at 66%. I mean, it's like the unbreakable level for the Bitcoin dominance. Lots of altcoins today, though, are outpacing Bitcoin. We have Bitcoin gold up today, 12%. We're going to actually have a story about that. Icon, Zcash, Dash, Bitcoin Diamond, Bitcoin Cash. Looks like all the Bitcoins are pumping today. Zcoin, Kyber Network, and NEM all doing quite well. One thing I want to point out is that there's a very good chance that we're going to finally end this month on a green candle right here. Last time we had a green candle was in October, and that was mostly due to to the uh, you know president of China blockchain talk pump on October 25th, right? So, I mean, unless something drastically catastrophic happens within the next five days, very good chance that we're going to end on a nice green candle this month. Now, you can see that Bitcoin has had a very interesting few days right here. We sort of had that pump and then that dump, and now we're back up to the same level again. Now, I have heard some people saying that, you know, potentially this could be forming somewhat of a cup and handle pattern. You could see this would be the cup, and then maybe if Bitcoin takes a little bit of a dump, that would be the handle. Now, traditional cup and handle pattern are actually a nice bowl. You can see we did have this sort of anomaly right here in the middle, but then again, it is Bitcoin. Bitcoin does kind of do these really randomly sporadic things. So we'll keep our eyes on it. I'm not going to say that that's what we're looking at currently. You know, if we come down here and retest sort of this line right here, then that'll sort of be a different story. But what we can confirm short term is that we are bouncing very nicely off of the 200 exponential, which is this blue line on the daily. Now, keep in mind that was providing a lot of resistance back here. Look how many times we tried to get above it. Once we finally did, well, obviously we had this nice green candle, but then we got stomped out by the 200. So what's going to end up happening is these two averages are actually going to probably end up uh, basically crossing each other's paths and Bitcoin is going to have to make a decision. 
And I would expect a very volatile few days when that does happen. Now, currently we have had four very nice bounces off the 8.2K level. And this is a very good level that we were looking at back here that also provided some of that resistance as well. If we were to fall below this, I would imagine that Bitcoin might ride along the top of the resistance, maybe even bringing us down to a 7.7K level, which would be a great opportunity in my personal opinion, not financial advice for Bitcoin accumulation. But moving forward over here, one thing I wanted to point out something that we haven't done. Um, this is over on the weekly, by the way. We haven't done this since the China pump. We're actually sitting above the entire EMA ribbon, which is you know, short term, pretty bullish, guys. You could see we came down here. We, we kind of dipped into it just a little bit and instantly bounced back off of it. So those are all really good things for Bitcoin. It does seem quite bullish in the short term. In fact, Peter Brandt, a very popular analyst, if you guys follow him, he's pretty bullish on Bitcoin as well. You could see retesting upper boundary of the channel uh, is normal. Retesting 18 DMA, January 14th low remains intact, right? So a lot of positivity across the board for Bitcoin. However, we are sitting below the 200 on the CME, right? Now, I do want to mention that we are going to have a gap come the end of today, which means that if Bitcoin is sitting below the 8.5K level, 8,494 to be specific, then I would imagine that if we're sitting above it, we'd probably come down sort of to touch that. And if we're sitting below it, we'll probably pump up. Now, I'm not saying we're going to stay there, but I would imagine there to be sort of a quick move if you're out there trading, well, these gaps have been an absolute uh, blessing to trade. Let's just say that. They've really worked out, right? But ultimately, like I said in my video two days ago, I am looking at this green line right here. And the closer we get to it, I, I believe it is great opportunities for dollar cost averaging, right? So, you know, obviously, if we were to fall straight down right now, which I don't think we're going to, that would be around the 7.2K level. So I am still keeping my eyes on this trend moving forward. But guys, we talk about price all day. We could talk about it till we're blue in the face, right? But what I really want to talk about is some amazing fundamentals that are actually happening with Bitcoin. And I also want to talk about some criticisms as well. We're going to get into some altcoin news at, uh, and, you know, the 51% attack. And then I want to talk about the killer app. So first of all, it's pretty obvious that Bitcoin is the most popular crypto asset among investors. I mean, you don't, I, you don't have to be a genius to figure this out. You know, you can go over to coin market cap and easily see that Bitcoin is number one sitting at a market cap of $153 billion with the number Number two crypto Ethereum sitting at 18 billion. That's a pretty big gap, hence why we have Bitcoin dominance sitting at around 66%. However, there are some criticisms, one of them being that Bitcoin uses way too much energy. You could see our Christopher Walken, or Christopher Walken, Christopher Whalen says, um, Bitcoin transactions now use more energy than your house in a week. Great illustration of why Bitcoin is dead. Now, we do have Saifedean Amos. He basically says, well, Bitcoin uses this energy because it's worth it. What cheaper method do you have for final settlement? of sound money around the world in under an hour. How much energy do central banks use to produce their easy money, right? He says Bitcoin is entirely voluntary. If people using it um, and it costs a lot, then it must be worth it, right? Value is subjective. So you're thinking that it isn't worth it for your means, but that doesn't really mean anything. Also, guys, just to point this out, keep in mind that Bitcoin is the easiest way essentially to move massive amounts of money on the safest network on planet Earth in under 10 minutes, right? Now, I know what you're saying. That's too long, too much energy. Well, try moving a bar of gold. Like say you're in the UK and I'm in the US and I want to send you a bar of gold. Can I send you a bar of gold in under 10 minutes for less than the amount of electricity that it costs to power a house in a day? No. I mean, first of all, that's impossible. You'd have to have a ridiculously fast jet, use tons of, okay, we're not going to go into it, but I think you see my point. Also, they are looking into different ways, green energy and Bitcoin. Great uh, article that came out. This came out uh, actually almost two years ago. And you can see right here, they're looking for different, uh, you know, ways to do that. And here you go right here. There's the exact example that I used. You know, people talk about, oh, you know, to buy a cup of coffee. But, you know, what would it take to send a bar of gold essentially across the world in under 10 minutes? I'm sure that would take a lot more energy than a Bitcoin transaction. A lot of people say that Bitcoin is outdated. It's dinosaur technology, right? All of these altcoins are going to just be so many, so much better solutions, right, than Bitcoin. Well, just keep in mind that technology technology does progress. I mean, look at computers back in like, you know, when they first came out versus now, you know, I mean, if you told somebody in the fifties that, you know, we would be able to, you know, store all that amount of 
uh, information on a little thumb drive, they would have said you were crazy, right? Well, moving on over here, I do want to just really quick mention that Bitcoin is going to potentially have some major upgrades between Taproot and Schnorr. So these are the Bitcoin improvement proposals. You may have heard some channels talking about them. Number 340, 341, and 342. Now, I'm not going to go into it too much on this channel. Don't get bored. Don't click off. Stick around. We're going to get to the good stuff. So this would be a proposed soft fork, not a hard fork, okay? You're not going to be getting free Bitcoin. No one's getting any free money. Essentially, and it is expected to bring a much needed privacy feature to Bitcoin. A lot of people complain, you know, Bitcoin is not private enough, right? It's only pseudo anonymous. So they say, be it a simple payment between two parties, the opening or closing of a lightning channel, a sophisticated smart contract, doesn't matter. It's all going to look the same to an outside observer, right? So these improvement proposals don't necessarily mean that they're they're definitely going to happen, but they do show that the authors of the projects are now in a general agreement that, you know, this is what they want to do to the language. Now, also speaking about the Schnorr signature, super quick, just going to mention this. It's going to reduce the number of public keys the Bitcoin network needs to know by 67% and reduces the number of signatures needed by 50%. So, you know, essentially it's a huge potential reduction in the data that the Bitcoin network needs to keep track of in its history, right? These are all things coming to Bitcoin potentially that are going to make it that much better, right? Now, if you want to know way more about this, actually, Ivan on tech, he did a live stream just a few hours ago before this video. You can see right here, he goes into all the upgrades. If you want like a super long, really drawn out explanation, check out that video. But for today's video, we're not going to go into that too much. But what makes Bitcoin so much better, for example, than these other, you know, cryptocurrencies? Why do I personally think that Bitcoin is going to be are going to have a lot more value than, you know, some of these other forks. You know, you got Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Gold, Bitcoin Diamond, Bitcoin SV, all these different spin-offs, right? Well, the reality is is those are all just hard forks of Bitcoin. It's not that hard to make a hard fork of Bitcoin. You just split the block and go, oh, this is my new my new Bitcoin, right? But to create Bitcoin actually takes a lot of energy, hence the complaint about it, you know, taking too much energy, but it's difficult to create, right? Just like gold is difficult to create, just like any real commodity that has high value or hard assets are difficult to create. And by the way, the reason that I'm on this page right now is because if you guys haven't checked out the Bitcoin standard, uh, which actually, ironically enough, is from Saifedean Amos, who we just spoke about, you guys definitely have to check out this book. I'm not like being sponsored by them or anything. Um, you know, for 25 bucks, it's honestly one of the greatest investments. And you're probably saying, well, I already know everything about Bitcoin. Guys, trust me, when you read this book, your mind is just going to, it's going to explode. Definitely check that book out. But they do talk about things like hard assets throughout history, right? Now, talking about altcoins, you can see right here, Bitcoin gold, which was a fork of Bitcoin, which was not difficult to produce. It was very simple to produce. You just forked the blockchain, right? You could see that it's under its second 51% attack. Now, 51% attacks occur when a single organization or a pool, a mining pool or something like that controls the majority of the network's hash rate. Once it's executed, the perpetrators have control over transactions to modify the ordering, prevent them from being confirmed, reverse them, or even facilitate double spending, right? And this is kind of the problem that we're seeing with the whole Bitcoin Cash uh, crew where they're looking to implement this tax and if they don't if you don't adhere to it you're basically going to be an orphan block right so you know they're using a different uh, hash using Zhash, which is very different from Bitcoin, right? But obviously, this is showing why Bitcoin's network is way more secure than these. For example, now everyone's talking about the Bitcoin SV pump, right? Well, now there's speculation that Calvin Air may have cleverly market triggered essentially the pump and caused the pump. Now, I'm not going to go into this. I don't really personally care about Bitcoin SV. It's not the original Bitcoin. It never will be. It's a spinoff clone led by a madman, essentially. But you can see when you're looking at all these different cryptos, even for example, and I know I'm kind of getting on a tangent here, but you have Ripple coming out saying that they're looking to do an IPO. And to quote uh, Brad Garlinghouse in his own words, he says, I think over the next 12 months, you're definitely going to see IPOs in the crypto and blockchain space. I'm not sure we want to be the first, but we certainly don't want to be the last. So I'd expect we'd be on the leading side of that, not the lagging side of that. Now, I'm not taking any jabs at, at Ripple or XRP, but I do want to ask yourself, I want you to ask yourself the question, 
What happens if these other crypto projects that have these tokens, these tokens that are for utility, but they end up going public and they end up having public shares? Then what does that mean for the token? What is the value of the token? How many crypto projects did we see come out in 2017 and 2018? For example, like a lot of these wallets, I don't mean to pinpoint, but you know, bread wallet, BRD. Like what is really the purpose of that token? What, what can you even do with that token? Most of them were just funding mechanisms. That's it. And now if these companies are going to be taking it public to IPOs, I'm not saying that that's not going to be great for funding. Yes, it's going to be awesome. It's going to provide the opportunity you know, for more people to get involved, for more resources. But what does it mean for the underlying crypto asset? And for everyone out there that's you know very big into XRP, not just speculation, but you truly believe that XRP will be the standard, I want your opinion. You know, what is that going to do to the value of the actual token itself if it goes public? I mean, and what if they just, you know, because you have X current and X rapid, right? What if all these different financial institutions decide that they love the Ripple technology, but they don't want to use the token? Then where does the value of the XRP token derive from? And I'm curious, I'm not bashing on anybody. I'm, I, I want you to actually drop a comment below because I understand where Bitcoin's value comes from. I get that. But these other tokens, I don't really understand where the value is derived from. They're very easy to create, right? Some of them, you don't even need really any proof of work at all, right? So just that's just one thing to consider moving forward, guys. So that is, that's kind of my spiel on the whole Bitcoin and altcoins thing. I do want your opinions on that. And like I said, if you do think that I'm missing fundamentally some really awesome altcoins and you think I should have a look, drop them below and maybe we'll do a top altcoin video. Maybe, maybe we'll see guys. But Here's the big news. Here is the big news. So we have the president of BACT, Adam White. He spoke at the World Economic Forum in Davos, and he was talking about the BACT consumer app, which is looking to launch this year. Now, they didn't give a specific date when the app is going to launch, but apparently the app is going to look more like a crypto version of PayPal than a crypto exchange, right? Which I do think is going to help with adoption. Not everybody wants to get on an exchange and look at candles and, but no, that's not how the, that's not how you're going to get mainstream adoption. Not every Everyone is a trader. Not everybody wants to be a trader, right? So far, it's been revealed that the Back Consumer app will support tokenized loyalty rewards programs, equity trading, crypto asset trading, and a portal for merchants to accept crypto. So essentially, you know, un unlike exchanges like Coinbase, etc., which mostly just offer the ability to buy and sell or accept cryptos and that's it, the Backed Consumer app aims to be a comprehensive app for all sorts of blockchain-based FinTech, and I am so excited about this. This is exactly what we need. We need a simple user interface that your, your aunt, your grandma, your skeptical friend can get into, right? Nobody wants to figure out how to become a trader, how to read charts, how to sell and buy things on exchanges. That is not how you're gonna get the next, you know, wave of interest into crypto personally. I, I just, that's my opinion. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited about that. So that was the big news I wanted to mention. But I do know a lot of people have spoke about Ethereum, right? And DeFi. Now I actually would have to say that my next coin would be Ethereum after Bitcoin. I'm, I'm very interested in the whole decentralized finance, right? But the current problem is, and you can see right here, this is actually pointed out uh, by Alex Larson from Investment Associates at Blockchain Capital, he says that I think a lot of the criticisms are pretty fair for the whole DeFi movement. He says, I see them mostly from the Bitcoin community and they have a general opposition to anything that they would consider not completely decentralized. And I actually agree with this, okay? Um, a lot of the apps, a lot of these... Um, you know, things on DeFi, they're, 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 they're controlled, they're centralized, right? They have a headquarters, essentially. Now, he does say that decentralization right out of the gate is probably asking for more trouble than the benefit that you get. I also agree with this, okay? If you just straight up open Pandora's box and let's say you screw up something or there's something wrong with the code or there's a bug or it's not absolutely perfect, which let's be honest, no code is ever perfect. But, you know, that being said, that could really spell out a lot of danger. You know, for example, uh, Neo. The cryptocurrency NEO, you may be familiar with it. A lot of people have criticisms about them, you know, for being too centralized, but their whole thing is they want to really make sure that everything is essentially perfect, you know, before opening Pandora's box, like I said, right? And you can also see, says the fact that this technology is new, Ethereum only a couple years old at this stage. I really don't think you can expect there to be any semblance of mainstream adoption at this stage. So the thing is, is obviously the biggest risks are taken when no one's talking about it, right? They have the biggest rewards, 
but they also have the biggest risks, right? You, you could lose a lot of money investing in some of these things, but you could also make a lot of money, right? So I just wanted to say, you know, to point out, I had a lot of comments on my video from two days ago, like, oh, K-Dub, you don't understand the altcoins, whatever. No, I do. <laughs> Trust me, I've been in this for over three years, guys. I just, I just know that, you know, long-term store of value Bitcoin has outpaced them. Short-term, there's gonna be some altcoins that are gonna 10X, 20X, 100X. The question is, which ones are those? And hopefully we'll be able to find those together as a community and become multi-bajillionaires moving forward. Hopefully, hopefully, right? Now let's get into some news before we get on. You know, having negative interest rates Okay, banks essentially means that instead of receiving interest income on cash deposits, banks and institutions are actually charging a fee for storing money. This is a big deal. This is why I say, you know, buy Bitcoin, hold Bitcoin, because when you look at this, they essentially say it's a ticking time bomb. The general idea of this is to incentivize banks to lend more funds freely, which ultimately should benefit local or global financial situations. But think about this. Think about this realistically. So I'm putting $100 away, right? But I'm paying a premium. Premium, right? I'm paying like $102 or $103 to guarantee that when I come back in five years, my $100 is still $100. That's absolutely ludicrous, in my opinion. Absolutely ludicrous. So that's just one thing to point out. And for people who don't think that this is, you know, happening moving forward, you could see that over at Davos again, or Davos at the World Economic Forum, they did announce the creation of a global consortium of digital currency governance. It's going to consist of financial institutions, government representatives, academics, international organizations, leading companies, technical experts, NGOs, and members of forums of communities on global level. So Basically, it's getting serious, guys. Like, we're probably going to head towards a cashless society at some point, and digital currencies are going to be the norm, not like back and forth on PayPal and Venmo, like real actual cryptocurrencies, right? The purpose is going to be to establish a framework of regulations um, and we'll work with both public and private sectors to explore the presented opportunities. Uh, and before we go, I just have to make a, just have to make a point. Uh, don't like Amazon? Don't shop there. Don't like McDonald's? Don't eat there. Don't like Walmart? Don't shop there. Don't like Bitcoin Cash? Don't use it. Don't like government? Pay them or go to prison. I totally agree with this, guys. It's crazy, right? But the funny part is this came from Roger Veer. And uh, you can see Crypto Rampage says, don't like paying miners tax on Bitcoin Cash? Get your blocks orphaned. Ha! <laughs> Got he! <laughs> Got he! <laughs> But that being said, I do want to end on one, uh, one bit of good news today. So we have some blockchain and cryptocurrency firms have pledged to help victims of the coronavirus. I'm not going to go into that. I think everyone's well aware of what's happening right now over in China. Binance has pledged to donate 10 million Chinese yuan or roughly $1.44 million to the effort. So I think we can end on that. That's a nice, nice good note to end today's video on. So that being said, thank you so much again for coming back to the channel. You guys rock. You are the reason that I even have this channel. You're the reason that I get up and do this every single day. Having a look at Bitcoin, what are we doing? We trying to fill the gap right now, guys? <laughs> What's going on? We had a pump and we did get rejected again at the 8.5K level. So very interesting moving forward. So that is it for me today. Thank you so much once again for coming back to the channel. You guys rock. If you haven't got subscribed yet, definitely get subscribed. I do have an absolutely free Telegram group if you want to join it. Link is below. That's it for me today, guys. My name is K-Dub. This is Crypto Zombie. Until next time, stay crypto. And of course, peace out.